Assuming a decision has been made about the size and location of solar heat collectors, choosing the right pump is the next logical step. Generally speaking, a flow rate between 0.04 and 0.02 gallons per minute is good. If your collector array has a surface area of 100 square feet, the ideal flow rate would be about 3 gallons per minute. This flow rate applies to closed loop and drain back systems. Trickle down systems can handle slightly lower flow rates. The difference between a pump and a circulator is sometimes hard to understand because a pump may be used as a circulator and a circulator may be used as a pump. Circulators circulate fluid through a closed loop system like baseboard heating systems. Pumps lift water from a low level to a high level in the same way that water is pumped from a well. Pump performance is measured by flow rate and head pressure. A 1,000 gallon per hour pump moves 1,000 gallons of water per hour horizontally, but the same pump may only move one gallon of water a height of 20 feet. Pump head pressure is also important. This is the measure of the height a fluid can reach at zero flow rate. If we're working with a closed loop system, the flow rate of the pump will be the same for the ground level collector as it would be for a roof mounted collector. The head pressure requirements of a closed loop system depend only on the frictional drag of the collector, the heat transfer coil, and other plumbing connections. The lifting capacity of a closed loop system pump is irrelevant since water in a closed loop system is circulated rather than being lifted. Open loop or drain back pumps generally require more power than closed loop pumps because water must be lifted. Not only must the frictional drag of the plumbing be overcome, but the head pressure of the pump must be sufficient to overcome the height differential between the top of the drain back tank and the top of the drain back collector. A common Taco 007 circulator may be used as a pump for this 90 square foot trickle down array. This is true because the height differential between the high head tank and the top of the collector is only 6 feet. According to the flow chart, the flow rate at a height of 6 feet is 2 gallons per minute. This flow is practical for this trickle down array. Many people use a three-speed Grundfaust pump for their drain back system, but cast iron pumps sometimes have rust problems. If you're powering a closed loop circulator system with a photovoltaic power supply, you won't need a very powerful pump, and a small LCID or Hartel or Lang would do. DC pumps may also be connected in series to increase the head pressure, but some DC pumps are very expensive. If you're experimenting with a low budget solar hot water system, you may be interested in a moderately priced Swift Tech pump like the one Gary Reese sometimes uses. The 12 volt DC Swift Tech 355 requires only 18 watts of power. It has a flow rate of 120 gallons per hour and a head pressure of 20 feet. These pumps are normally available for less than $90 and they can handle temperatures up to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. If $90 is beyond your budget for an experimental system or if you need a pump that can handle higher temperatures you may want to follow Doug Kellimer's suggestion and pick up one of these little 6 watt 12 volt DC pumps from eBay for less than $40. They come straight from Hong Kong. If you order one from Qing, tell them JC sent you. This little pump has a flow rate of 109 gallons per hour and a head pressure of 8.5 feet, and it can handle temperatures in excess of 260 degrees Fahrenheit. It's ideal for experimental work and small closed loop systems. Most of the rotor blades I've looked at are straight, but these six blades are curved to efficiently spin water from the central inlet to the rotor perimeter. This is how a pressure differential is created between water entering and leaving the pump. Notice how the barbed inlet spigot 
is larger than the barbed outlet spigot. This also helps enhance the pressure differential and increase the pump efficiency. I couldn't find a flow chart for this pump, so I thought I'd ask Kat Anna to help me make one. Hello and welcome to the pump testing room. My name is John Canavan and we have with us today Kat Anna, the camera woman. Say hello to folks, Kat Anna. Okay, very good. Uh, now, uh, what we'll be testing today is this little pump right here. This is a 12-volt DC pump and it could be used with a photovoltaic system. Uh, and the voltage uh, changes as the sun changes. Um, but we're going to be testing this at a, a voltage of 8 volts um, because the flow rate will change depending on the voltage. Anyway, uh, so we're testing this for performance and the two most important points of performance have to do with the flow rate at a height of zero and uh, the what we call the head pressure. And the head pressure is the highest column of water that the, uh, the pump can support at a, a flow rate of zero. Okay, uh, now let's first turn our, our, our voltmeter on and check the voltage. You can see that the voltage now is 16.3 volts, but let's see what happens when we turn the, the pump on. You can see the voltage drop. You see it's uh, 7.9. I figure it's about 8 volts. Uh, so the, the pump is on. It's pumping water. You can see the water flowing. Now we want to measure this flow rate at, a, at a zero elevation. So let me come over here and uh, we'll take a look at our timer and when the timer reaches zero we'll start our we'll start our pump. Ready? Alright, so we have our pump in here ready. When we 53, 54, 56. Okay, alright, we just started our flow. Check out the flow down here. Okay, as soon as it reaches the top of our one liter bottle, we'll turn the pump off and we want to see how long that takes. Ready? Now, okay, so that's 15 seconds. Alright, so that's the first number that we want to remember. Uh, this, that's the uh, flow rate. It uh, takes 15 seconds for a one, to fill the one liter bottle. And we'll, we'll do the, uh, the graphs later. Okay, uh, so put our water back in our in our container. Right. Now, the next point we want to measure will be the head pressure. That's the next most important thing as far as the pump is concerned. So we don't need a bottle for this. We just want to see how high the water will pump. So I'll turn it on. Okay, and you see the column of water here. It's up right about that high. So that's about 5 feet 5 inches. Okay, that's our head pressure. Alright, let me turn that off. It's a little messy. Alright, so we have two points already. They're the most important points. But we're going to uh, continue this. We want to see what the flow rate is at uh, 2 feet. Okay, so we know at, at zero elevation, the flow rate, uh, it takes 15 seconds. Now we want to see how long this will take. Wait, let's wait till the meter gets to zero. Okay, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 52, 54, 60, Okay, zero. All right. So we want to see how long it's going to take to fill up this one liter bottle. Seven seconds, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. All right, it takes uh, twenty seconds uh, to fill the one liter bottle at uh, an elevation of two feet. All right, that makes sense, right? You're going to remember this now, Katana? 
Okay, so we got 15 seconds for the first one and 20 seconds for the second, for two feet. Now, um, let's see what happens at four feet. We want to know how long it's going to take to fill the one liter bottle at an elevation of four feet. There we go. So, uh, all right. Well, we got a, a little while to wait here. Uh, it's uh, 11 seconds. Let's wait till it, it reaches uh, 30 seconds, and then we'll we'll figure out the actual length of time. So we got 19 seconds, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Okay. It's at 30 seconds. The water is starting to flow. All right. That's 36 seconds. So it's taking a lot longer now at this, this higher elevation, and that's what you would expect. Okay. 55. 58. Oh, going around again. Okay, what is that? Uh, 13. Uh, so that's uh, 13 plus uh, 30, uh, which is that's 43 seconds. So uh, we're at a much higher voltage now, and the flow rate is a lot greater. So uh, we're going to take some the same measurements at this higher voltage. All right, let me turn the pump off. All right, this is at... Uh, a height of zero, so the, the, uh, it's the horizontal flow of the pump. Uh, and when this reaches, the timer reaches zero, we'll turn this on. We'll see how long it takes to fill up the one liter bottle. All right, it's 56, 57, 58, 59. Okay, we just turned it on. Uh, you can see the water flowing. That's four seconds, five seconds, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, so it took uh, 11 seconds to fill uh, the, the one liter bottle. That's at a voltage of, uh, that's at the higher voltage, 11.6 volts. Okay, that's our first point. That's at an elevation of zero feet. Uh, the, the next measurement we'll be taking will be at an elevation of two feet. Ready? Now let's take a look at our timer, 42, 43. All right, as soon as it gets to zero, we'll turn it on. We want to see how long it takes to fill this jug up, the, uh, the one liter container. All right, here we go, 58, 59, 60. All right, all right, so that's two seconds. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13 seconds. It took 13 seconds to fill our one liter bottle. Figure out what all this means. Thank you very much, Katana. Okay, bye bye. From the flow rate data that was collected, a flow chart was plotted that demonstrates the dependence of flow rate on both elevation and supply voltage. To increase the head pressure, two pumps may be connected in series. There's a man in the funny papers we all know He lives way back a long time ago He don't eat nothing but a bear cat stew well, this cat's name is uh, Ali Oo. He got a chauffeur that's a genuine dinosaur. And he can knuckle your head before you count to four.